Hello there. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to sketch a mountain range. Using a few simple techniques and well-placed lines, you can create the impression of a dramatic piece of scenery. All you need is a pen and two minutes. As you can see I'm using an ordinary biro just because that's the sort of pen that I prefer. But there are a lot of different types of artists pen out there and it's up to you to find what suits you best. Now when I'm sketching a mountain range I like to start with the foreground first and then build up into the background which is where the dramatic massive mountains are going to be so I like to make my decisions as I go along. So I'm going to start with imagining a river kind of coming around here in between some of my mountains with some little mountains on each side maybe with a big one in the middle so a good place to start is about here start in the middle and starting off fairly smooth because I'm trying to give the impression of a field or a hill and I'm probably going to draw in the top of a hedge just here just to further that impression of a field. Notice how the top of the hedge is a squiggly line and the bottom is a fairly straight line. <laughs> like that. So then just beyond this hill is where I'm going to place my lake and the lake for the minute is sort of a negative space so I'm going to forget that it exists and let the base of the mountains shape the shape of my river. So I'm going to put the bottom corner of a mountain here, a fairly smooth line for the bottom, and then a jaggedy kind of rock face. You can let your hand go a bit more loose to create the natural effect of a jagged surface and then sort of tighten your hand up to give the impression of a smoother surface and I'm going to sort of draw on the border of a beach that I'm trying to create Oh, it looks like we've put in another mountain there, or at least another part of the same mountain. That's fine. And, ooh, what should we put on the end of this? Let's continue this along a little bit, and let him go along to there. And let's have another mountain come out here and overlap. We're doing another jagged line for the top of the mountain. Starting off shallow here, and this is another effect that you can do and get steeper. Kind of like an exponential growth curve. See, so I start shallow, get steep, and then go shallow again. And that's just to mimic the natural effects that erosion would probably have. Because I'm making this scene up as I go along. But I want it to look fairly natural. So for now I'm going to leave the middle of the scene completely blank. But I am going to draw the centerpiece in the background. And it's going to be a massive impressive structure
with maybe a little baby mountain back here. <coughs> so just take a look at that. You've got your basic shapes, you've got your outlines. And now you're going to have to decide where your river's coming from. Is it coming from this side or is it coming from this side? Doesn't matter which. I think I'm going to choose this side. So I'm going to slope the base of my mountain down slightly so that it favours this side here. And I'm going to make the beach thinner on this side thicker on this side. <laughs> While I'm at that I'll draw in a little slither of beach there. <laughs> and this is an important bit. You need to decide <coughs> where your light is coming from. Is it going to be coming from this side or this side? Now I'm going to go with the light coming down from this corner. So now I need to give a 3D effect to the outlines of these mountains. So half of the mountain is going to be in shadow and half of it is going to be in the light. And again down here. So this line I'm drawing is like a dividing line. and it divides a sharp boundary between light and dark. Everything on this side of the mountain is going to be light. Everything on this side of the mountain is going to be dark. So now I'm going to shade in my beaches and you can do that effect with just some diagonal lines very lightly scoring over the page. You don't want to spend too long or it'll get a bit too dark. So beach down here and across here up into that corner there we go. So it's starting to take shape and you could leave it there. But I'm going to just give the impression of how I would start going about shading in the dark and the light sides of the mountains and then I'll leave the rest to you. So I'm going for a heavy squiggle here and notice how I'm leaving a gap between squiggles and that sort of gives the impression that there are still a few peaks to the rocks that are poking up above the other bits of rock and still catching a little bit of that light even though they're on the dark side And you can go over some of the squiggles again at a slightly different angle, kind of like a quick version of a crosshatch, just to make some areas seem more dark than others. Maybe it's home to a cave, who knows. And I'm going to do some more crosshatches down here, just because that bit would probably in, be in shadow in the natural world. And notice how I'm now going over everything with a light crosshatch. And that's because this is the dark side of the mountain. On the light side of the mountain, I'd leave those areas completely white, which I'm going to do now. So I'm bearing my hand across the page much more lightly. 
and that's leaving this kind of grey line as opposed to a black line. And I'm trying to go downwards as much as possible to give the impression of a slope because it's a mountain and mountains slope. And notice how that boundary here has actually faded a little bit. Before, over here, it's a stark boundary. But now, you can see that the boundary is sort of inferred, it's a bit more fuzzy. And that's good. So there you have it. Now, I won't bore you with going into doing that detail on all of the mountain areas, but you can get the gist. So that concludes our short video on how to quickly sketch a mountain range. And we've touched on rivers and fields, so I might go into those in more detail in another video. So I've just spent an extra 10 minutes shading in the rest of the mountains, and this was my result. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer. just so that you can see the pen strokes. I've cross-hatched quite a bit to create these deep shadows. And as you can see, where these indentations happen here, I've inferred that there's more shadow because in nature, these would be the darkest areas. So there we go. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, drop a comment. Or if you've got anything that you'd like me to cover in the next video, again, drop a comment.